Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm here with Chris Lipe, and we're gonna talk to you about how to not blow your voice. You make me so brace for the flood, and let me chase the food. Devastation in a moment of release. Make my lives rush and climb into it again. So maybe you just got done singing something like that. Or maybe you're trying to explore these more abrasive and aggressive sounds. You need checks. You need a system to make sure that you're not messing up your voice. And these are, these come in the forms of little sounds and being real mindful of how they feel when you make these sounds, particularly after you've engaged your voice in those ways. But if you want to go deeper with Lauren and you want to learn what it really means to know your voice, the best thing to do is make sure you have a good warm-up routine that resonates with how you sing. If you want to know how Lauren warms up, and you'd like to do that with her, it's a very mindful approach. Click the link below and join her free warm-ups course. What's it called? How to awaken your inner monster. <laughs> All right, so what are some of these, these sounds and checks that you do? They're actually kind of silly, and I think once we get over that, you're gonna find that it's a really good way to status check yourself. Okay. So one thing you can do is something that's just a dog whimper. Okay. And your, your mouth is like not totally closed, not like you're, but you're just relaxed. You're in your head voice. Mm -hmm. And what are you testing here? Why would we check our head voice after we've just got done yelling and screaming? You know, we're so worried about hurting ourselves, especially after we approach things like screaming and grit. So if we're in our head voice, if it's not hoarse or raspy and it still feels fine okay. and sounds fine, you did not injure yourself. So you have not introduced swelling that creates poor closure. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if it's not raspy feeling and sounding and you still have that full like, oh, <laughs> now what if, what if you try to do that and you haven't sung at all and you, you can't get that good sort of closure and, and pure sound. Maybe you just woke up that way. <laughs> and okay, so you need to give yourself a little bit more life before you can make yeah, this check. Yeah, because as singers, we wake up in the morning yeah. and sometimes we just know that today's not the day. And that's okay. Or maybe it's just too early. Maybe you need to give yourself a chance to, to, to do something with mm -hmm. your voice first. But okay, so we have, the, we have the dog whimper exploring around in different parts of that head voice. Maybe we darken it. Okay, what's check number two? Check number two, you can toot like a train. Okay. Also in head voice? In head voice. Okay, so we're exploring our head voice, testing the closure again. This, this uh, placement, feels very much more forward and in the, in the front of my face. What is, why are we doing the, the whimper and then this? Like why, why test it this way? You're kind of hitting a different spot of your head voice. If you notice there's more resonance in your face. And it's kind of sitting a little bit lower in your larynx. Yeah, you're, you're more open. So you're, you're, you're positioning things differently and, and checking to see if you can move your resonance around a little bit without um, stumbling upon a part of your voice that, that feels raw, right? Mm -hmm. and, and doing, not only moving your pitch around, but moving your resonance around is a way to, to make sure that there are no little areas that you've overdone. Mm -hmm. And these are some things you can do at a show in the middle of a performance. Right. And sometimes it takes as little as two seconds. Maybe you turn around, you know, you check that and you're good to go. Okay. So the third thing you can try is something as simple as, hey, 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 hey. So you're really 
disengaged from any sort of push. And the, again, this is, a, this is a cord closure test, right? If you have to push too much air through that, hey, 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 and it's, it's a soft onset, right? Not mm -hmm. A, A, but hey, 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 and sort of sigh quietly into that at the very bottom sort of sedated area. Mm -hmm. If you can't do that, if you have to push too much air, you have swelling and you need to back off, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. And it's similar to when we have laryngitis, when even the simplest of things are very laborious, even speaking. Oh, yeah. So, you, yeah, you, you kind of you feel like you have to do this just to get the closure. Absolutely. But these little simple tests, because they're they're so backed off and they're almost muttered, if through the course of your practicing or your performing, you can back away and do some of these things and create these little tests, you have a way to constantly check yourself so that you know how far to push, how far to go, how long to go. Only you know how long you can practice. And these things are going to help you determine that. And this will come with time and experience. So if you're still working out the kinks as a new singer, that's all part of the journey. You might find that after experimenting with how to get grit for two minutes, you try to do one of these checks and you're like, oh, I can't do it anymore. Okay, be done. Come back later when you've when you've recovered and you, and you pass these tests and then go for it that way. So please, before you try any of this, you have to make sure you're warmed up. And if you want to learn how I warm up and warm up with me and make sure you're staying mindful, check out the free course in the description below. We'll see you there.